All right, going to take a quick minute here just to answer a comment I'm seeing here. This is an interesting comment. Ian Arbus. I'm not sure if I'm probably pronouncing your name last name wrong, but uh, it says, I'm new to this channel and, ha and I'm having a hard time figuring out what this guy believes after hours of watching his videos. I have a pretty good idea of what he doesn't believe, but I can't figure out what he believes about uh, the Trinity. Uh, believer baptism, worshiping in a group, um, or in group. King James, not the 1611 Bible, but the person. The U.S.'s place in global politics. I'm not trying to trying to call him out or anything. I'm legitimately interested. Are you able to break it down if you have time and feel like it? Also, I've read the KJV and the Reign of Valera cover to cover several times, and I know a good deal about church history, so I don't need any simplified breakdown. Um, I just want to know specific, what specifically Husky believes. Well, I'll answer you quickly. Um, I've talked a lot about the whole Trinity thing. Um, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. Whenever I hear something proclaimed, and it's not a Bible word, King James Bible word, I, I have to say, okay, I'm going to have to question that. Um, and uh, the Godhead is the word in the King James Bible. Now, I've probably used the word Trinity in different studies and things referring to the Godhead. But uh, I never really looked into what the Catholics teach about the Trinity until not long ago. And what they teach is that there are three different uh, persons of the Trinity as far as three different distinct separate people. Uh, each one with the body, soul, spirit, body, soul, spirit, body, soul, spirit. You know, the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is not the Father, or whatever else. Uh, I believe that that contradicts Scripture. And I don't believe the Bible contradicts unless you're talking dispensational things. All right, where you have something in the Old Testament, obviously, they're sacrificing animals. New Testament, we don't. So there's no contradiction there. It's just you look and say, well, two different dispensations. God's dealing with different people in different time periods there, different rules and things. Um, so, you know, the, you know, you can look at the Bible and say, well, there are contradictions there, you know, but there's not. It's just dispensational changes. But when it comes to something doctrinal, um, where you have uh, Jesus Christ saying, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father, um, you know, he's one with the Father and things like this. Um, the Father's in him. He talks about, uh, in Philippians, it talks about in him, speaking of Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Um, you know, it's a mystery, is the whole thing. We can't figure out exactly the composition of the Godhead and be able to understand how Jesus can be on the earth, but God the Father's in heaven. Um, but yet they're in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So, um, but, you know, what I teach against is the Catholic concept of the Trinity. If, you know, somebody is saying Trinity, referring to the Godhead, well, I'm not going to be real rough on them, but I'm against the Catholic concept of the Trinity. Um, so, and I've talked about that. I've done extensive studies and, and things on that. You can watch that for more information. Uh, believer's baptism. Uh, yeah, I believe that it's baptism is a, a choice that an adult makes. Um, that when you get saved, uh, it's not necessary for salvation, um, but it's it's a it's a symbolic thing where you're showing you're dying to the old man and buried with Jesus, you know, and being raised again. Um, I think that that's the symbology there of believer's baptism. Um, if somebody you know somebody gets saved. And they don't they don't get baptized before they die. Well, they're not going to go to hell, in other words. But I think it's a it's a thing that's important to do. And um, so, uh, worshiping in a group. Um, yeah, I have no problem with that. Um, my wife and I have been called into a ministry where we do a lot of research. We do meet with people occasionally and things like that. But we do not have a scheduled weekly meeting. You know where we have to meet at a certain time in a certain place and whatever we don't do that uh, because we're called into a different ministry uh, we spend a lot of time in research and right now we're not able to do the research thing as much because we're working all the time we just got back not long ago so um, but uh, you know 
a bunch of brethren want to get together and, and worship someplace, that's fine. You know, they, they meet at a community center or someplace like that, that's fine. What I'm against is the the uh, pagan church structure uh, that's that was you know basically formed by the Catholic Church of the Sunday best. They're not wearing Sunday best in the New Testament. There's no such thing um, of this order of service and things like that. I mean, where is that at? You know, you know there's things are to be done decently in an order. First Corinthians 14, but uh, this this ritual thing where you come to church. There's nothing like that in the New Testament. You're in church all the time. All right, so it's a it's a thing where you you don't I have to go to church to worship the Lord. I worship the Lord 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So, um, you can meet anywhere you want to as Christians, um, but I avoid the church building, getting a building and calling that church and then guilt tripping people for not getting into there and it becomes a social club and the whole deal. I've preached against it for many, many years. Uh, King James, not the 1611 Bible, but the person. Um, King James, you know, I believe that the Lord sets up kings and things and, and um, he'll he'll put a man in that's, that's godly, that fears the Lord. Um, but I'm, you know, can I say that King James was a saved man? You know, he was essentially, you know, a Church of England Episcopalian, kind of a Anglican, you know, basically. Um, again, I'm not going to be real, real rough because there was a lot of things that were not, um, you know, I mean, they're just coming out of the Reformation time period there. So, you know, they're not going to be really, really strong in doctrine. You can make that argument. But other people could say, well, yeah, but the Holy Spirit's there, you know. I know, I know. Um, but... Whatever people want to say about King James, I do not believe he was a sodomite. I don't believe that. I think that was a lie. Married and had eight children. Okay, um, he wasn't a sodomite. Wrote against sodomy. Uh, you know, I don't believe that. That was a. I can never remember the guy's first name. Whether it was John Weldon or something like that. But this guy uh, Weldon came out with these accusations that King James was a sodomite. Like 20 years after Saint, yeah, after King James had died, so uh, I don't take those things seriously. Was King James a saved man? I don't know. I don't know. I think that he um, feared God enough to uh, go against the Roman Catholic system, and uh, certainly God used King James to kind of protect the translators. You know, you had a lot of the other guys that were trying to translate the Bible: Wycliffe, uh, Tyndale. Um, uh, I can't even think of the other guys, uh, Coverdale, and you know, different guys like that. And they were basically like fugitives. So King James was the first one to step up and say, "Okay, I'll protect," you know, both the uh, Anglican guys and the um, Puritans, and give you seven years, basically. Well, I don't know if they made an exact time frame to get it done, but I'll protect you in, in the time it takes to make this translation and um, God chose that translation to bless and to use so uh, King James I don't know um, I have studied a little bit about him I don't know real in depth I haven't read a lot of the things little booklets he, that he wrote and things like that um, so that's my thing on King James um, say it or not I don't know but God certainly used him um, the U.S.'s place in global politics. Uh, the United States, in my opinion, um, there was, uh, they dedicated this country to Mary years and years ago. Uh, Ronald Reagan was the first one to allow the Pope onto the shores of America. Uh, America, at one point in time, was very much against Roman Catholicism. And now they have these... Uh, I can't even think of the name right now. I'm sorry, I've been working all day um, not on ministry things but construction uh, Al Smith Al Smith dinners you know this Catholic thing and all this stuff you know the original Al Smith was persecuted you know because he was a Catholic and things and, and tried to get into American politics and whatnot um, now it's like the Vatican overseas all the elections and they put in you know it's not elections it's 
selections and uh, they put in who's going to serve the Pope and all, now you get all the presidents going and you know meeting with the Pope and all this other stuff um, America was once a strong nation and uh, now we're just we you know this country basically is the strong arm the military branch of the Vatican so um, and as far as the place in global politics uh, we're basically fighting a lot of the crusades for the Catholic Church at this point Catholicism <clears throat> war on Islam which has been going on for centuries and I do believe that America is going to be set up to be destroyed at some point in time in the future that's why Stephen Anderson and a lot of these other false people are calling America Babylon because when America does fall then they'll say Babylon has fallen, it's fallen, you know, it's it's over, we're we're done with it and stuff. And the Antichrist shows up, they'll say, hey, Jesus came back. Uh, that's what I believe is gonna happen. Um, so uh, these things that America is doing around the globe right now at this point are serving, you know, just the agenda of the Vatican. Um, so that's why you have, you know, people that are trained Jesuits and things like that you know Knights of Malta Knights of Columbus and they're just about untouchable and and doing all kinds of things with the government so um, again you know America originally uh, the constitutional republic that we used to have back in the 19th century mostly and, and back before that um, this country was supposed to be a non-interventionist you know, country. We weren't supposed to get entangled in foreign affairs, and uh, that kind of went out the window. You know, with World War One, and you know, a lot of Americans were against the war, and so they set up the whole uh, was it the sinking of the Lusitania and things. And then um, again, Americans didn't want to go back into World War Two, and then they had Pearl Harbor and things and, and there's there's all kinds of stuff about that that they heard the communications and they knew that the Japanese were gonna attack and all the stuff and they you know they didn't you know stop the attack and whatever else to get the American people fired up and now the wars are just you know prepared and things like that big money making schemes so not meaning to go off on too long on that but uh, hopefully that answers your questions I realize you know you get new people and uh, they come along to this channel and what we talk about is so diverse and so varied and and things and uh, so a lot of times you kind of get overwhelmed and you think I have some questions you know for Brian and and I don't really want to watch you know I don't even know how many videos we have now 1200 something videos so but you know good questions and uh, that's why I took some just a few minutes here to answer this as I'm going through these comments I do try to look at comments early on within usually within the 20 first 24 to 48 hours I'll look at comments after that it just kind of I mean my you know the amount of comments I get in a day it's just you know mind-blowing so I can't possibly look at everything um, and I just want to reiterate one other thing too because of new people coming along they don't know my policies and things I used to have my email public and it just got ridiculous I mean I was getting uh, I don't even know how many sometimes hundreds of emails a day and I, I just I can't answer it all and I don't have my phone number listed for the same reason I had people call me and not have respect for my time and just go on and on and on so uh, anybody that wants to get in contact with me can write to me through the post office and uh, but there are there are ways you know you can leave a comment and I, I might get to see it or uh, send me a private message here on YouTube um, you know uh, I think that that's probably the best way to do it and uh, so that's gonna be it hopefully I answered your questions um, and I guess I'll Talk to you later.